Hello everyone and welcome to what I think is a very exciting album layout chair. I am so excited to be able to flip through this entire album for 2022. My album is all finished and this is the project that I have been working on with my very dear friend Julie Carrier from Canada, our 365 Days of Weather Scrapbooking. You may have been watching along as each month last year and a couple of months this year because obviously we couldn't do December until that was finished and then we had our cover page and our last page to share as well but we wanted to do a flip through of this entire project so you can see how it all came together. I've got some finishing touches that you haven't seen before within the flip through for this so stay tuned for that. I also have a whole redo on one of the months because I really wasn't happy with the pattern paper that I'd chosen and everything looked a bit dull. So I'm wondering if you can guess which month that was that I redid if you were watching last year. So have a little guess right now with what month you think it might be and let me know in the comments below if you pick the right month when I get there. If you are new to this whole entire project I will give you a brief introduction. You'll see a colour bar across here. All of these cardstock colours represented for me the top temperature of each day. Now where I live I never got down past this colour palette here. This was what I used. These colours here, it didn't get quite cold enough. I nearly got to Sage, which is one of my all-time favourite colours. It goes with so many of these colours here. And I was sort of really hoping we'd have some really cold weather. We nearly got there, but I just missed out on getting to the Sage. So each of these colours represent a bandwidth of temperature. And we used the dark side and the light side to give more variety. I'll put a link in the description below to Julie's website. You you will find posts on her website for each month that will detail each of the double page spreads within here that represent each month and also the front and the back cover. We have guides available for each of these months. What I did for my project was I used a Cricut Design Space file. So every month we designed a sketch. We took turns on designing sketches and then we would adapt it to our layouts and also use the colours to represent the temperatures. Julie got all the way down to black which is very 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 cold so her color palette range is much larger. If you haven't watched Julie's album flip through already I will have a link to that at the end of this video and also in the description below where I will have links. If you don't see those links straight away when you're looking at the little blurb that I write about this there's always a see more and you'll expand it to find a lot more information. So that's enough of me giving the little introduction on this. I want to get through the flip through because I'm very excited. I've never done a whole album layout chair before so this is going to be fun to flip through and relive some of these memories. As you can see from my title page here I decided to go with all beach photos and this is a little camera that I designed in Design Space and it comes with a couple of these files. It comes with a title page and it also comes with one of the page designs and that happens to be the month that I did the redo. So that's a little clue as to which month you'll see me do a whole entire redo of my layout. So let's turn the page to January. You can see I've got all of my journaling done. There were little bits that I hadn't done and you might be able to relate to this. I'm not sure. You might be a person that when they do their layouts, they get everything finished all at once. Sometimes I get a little bit distracted and I forget to go back and put the journaling in. So I had a little bit of catch up to do and I also changed some of how I did my journaling. So there's my handwriting in here. I have about three different handwriting styles so it all depends on what type of layout I'm doing. I have a more casual type of journaling which is like this when I'm handwriting and I also do cursive script and I seem to find that gets determined by what type of layout. So when I'm doing a fun type of layout I tend to do this style of journaling. You can see that January for me was extremely hot by my colour palette here but we did have some avocado days and most of my months I have put in some memory protectors. So some of these pocket little type pages where I I've been able to slip 
some extra photos in and I've got some interactive elements as well with flip flaps on other pages. Each month I did a title like this for my month which we started off with the year that was available with the design space file but then Cricut did some updates. So in my April video I have shown people a little tutorial on how to create a word art overlay in this font so they could create it themselves. I just love how the difference between, this is these are obviously my summer months, January and February are usually the hottest ones, but you can see that when I flip over to February, it cooled down quite a bit. There is not a lot of the yellow tones here. We went straight into milder days. I have interactive elements where I can pull out my journaling. Some of it goes onto the back as well. I like to put a little note on there so that people know that they can pull that out and read it because if there's just a little tab, sometimes that isn't visible. And I've used top loading memory protectors for this so it's easy to get in for these little elements. And having a little sign here, people know to pull that out and it's quite easy to put that back in again. Here's another page where I've got like the pocket page in here. And I have combined stamping on some of my pages. I've also included some typing on my pages here and I've done those on clear shipping labels. Erin Jacobson, who's with the creative design team, she put me onto these and I really love them. I can print them out on my just regular, very cheap printer, leave them aside to dry, cut them up into strips and insert them into areas. I tend to use these when I've got a lot to say. When I'm typing, I do find that I can fit more of a story in there. And if I've done typing in one area, I sort of like to continue that on with the page. When I'm typing, the words just seem to flow and the story and the moments get told. So you can see I've done that throughout, but I've also combined stamping around these to bring things in. I really love these type of stamp sets because they sort of lend themselves to this sort of project, especially when you've got photos from different moments throughout the month. So you can see with this layout here, I've got quite a bit happening with different size pocket pages and different flip flaps as well. And I like to put a little tab on here. This is the tab thin cuts. And these are the ones that I'm referring to. So they're just tabs, thin cuts. If these are still available, I'll put them in a link below with a few other items that I've used throughout this. Because as you can see, these are all double-sided. So this part here is actually a score line. So they will fold back on themselves. And that lends itself to being able to put a little stamp on here and give a little handle so that things can be lifted up and down. And that lets people know that this is an interactive element, that there's more underneath here to look at rather than just going on to the next page and maybe missing it. This is another interactive element where I did the journaling on a little tab here and I've done it all on the shipping label and printed it because I wouldn't have been able to fit all this information in with just my handwriting. And there's a stopper under here with some tape to stop it slipping right down to the bottom. So the month of March was quite busy, so I've done an extended story type thing here with different size memory protectors so that this little vacation that I took with my daughter, I can flip through and we can see all of the photos contained within one double page spread. So rather than having multiple pages as you turn through for March, I've contained it within these two 12 by 12s. And as I'm flipping through my album, you might notice that there are some stamped images. So where I could find stamped images that were appropriate to the journaling, I have stamped those. This has been done in second generation black ink, or it might even be third generation. Just have a play around with it. I just wanted something subtle that could go behind my journaling and that the text could still be read. So let's go through to April. Have you guessed yet which is my redo page? We're getting close. So this is another flip through one with lots of flip flaps to have a look at what has been going on. This is a double flip flap one because I took the photos of these rainbow lorikeets that come and visit in my backyard and they're just so pretty. They're very very loud but they come 
every time of the year at this time because they feed from the seeds from this tree that we have. You can see that I've done some stamping in the background. This is a very old stamp set here with a little bird on some leaves and I thought that was appropriate to put behind. This one here was all about Easter. So what I wanted to journal about was the Easter egg hunt because I love putting all the eggs out in the backyard. I close all the blinds so hopefully nobody sees. And then we do a tally of what everybody finds. And there are some rules with our Easter egg hunt because there are usually the generic type Easter eggs, but then there are also one special Easter egg for each person, or there might be two. So if you see one of those special eggs, you're only allowed to take one of them. If you find another one, you're not allowed to tell anybody else where you found it. They have to find it all by themselves. And I've got a little stamped image across here with some coffee cups because that's what this photo was all about. So I do love having some stamped elements on here. So now I'm getting into May. This was a pretty special event. We had a visit from our Close to My Heart president, Monica Wahongi. She came out to Melbourne and hosted an event and it was wonderful to have her there. And it was actually the first time that I had actually met and spoken with her in person. So that was a bit special. I really enjoyed that afternoon evening out that we had. I've got some more of these memory protectors. I've got flip flaps here so that I can put more of a story about what these photos here were like. This is a little concertina part that I created. It's not on flip flaps, it's just on cardstock and slides in here and I've adhered this one to the actual paper that's in this little pocket and you can just pull them out and check out the photos there. And this was a month that I made a big mistake and I actually put a photo of my son and his birthday cake on here and his birthday June. I don't know why I did that. Who knows what I was thinking. I know his birthday is June. I don't know how I managed to put a photo there. So I had to rectify that and lift that up and obviously put it on the next month of memories. So I had photos of the sunflowers. I had more of those that my children had bought me from Mother's Day. We actually didn't get a photo of us all together on that day, which was a little bit disappointing. So I'm going to rectify that this year. You can see I've got another one of those little tabs and you can pull that back and I've got all my journaling under here. I quite like sometimes when I've got a lot to say to hide the journaling and with these little sunflowers here, you may have noticed that I stamped a sunflower on the piece of paper here before I put my shipping label journaling on here that I had done. So now we'll go to June. I'm still not at the redo page yet. You can see I've got quite a lot of flip flaps on this one as well. This one folds up and then down. So you don't have to have them all going the same way. Having them go in a manner like this is a little bit of fun. And you can obviously see, I just did a stitch circle with this one and folded it in half rather than the tabs because I was mindful of the fact that the tab would stick up too far on this piece here. I've actually used one of the small alphabets to put a little subtitle on this one. And then I've got another flip flap section here where it all goes just straight up. To have that one mimicking this one here, it didn't quite work with number one, my embellishments and also the photo that is under here. I don't normally do a lot of floral elements on my layouts, but I thought these were appropriate. They're actually from the Australia and New Zealand digital collection and they worked quite well with my photos here. I've done some ink blending on these as I will have done on all of my floral elements that are throughout here. And when I say all of my floral elements, I think the creative design team girls that love flowers are rubbing off on me. Julie loves flowers, so does Andrea, Erin, Jaima and Chelsea. They all love flowers. Katie and I are a little bit more sparing when we use them, but I'm pretty sure they're rubbing off on me because I seem to be embracing all things floral. So let's turn the page and here we are. We're at my redo page. So did you get it right? It's July. I don't know if you remember that when I did these layouts, I had like a brown, grey, muted check sort of pattern here. And I had all circles that I had stamped in a similar manner to this 
with first and second generation inks to represent the weather from that day. This whole entire layout only has New England Ivy and Avocado in first and second generation stamping. And as I was looking at my photos and the more I looked at this page because I wasn't particularly happy with what I'd done and then I saw Julie's pages that she had done for July and of course we're at opposite ends when it comes to the weather cycle. So for her it was like spring summer. So she could do all the flowers and she did all of hers with thin cuts or die cuts but I wanted to use the Cricut file and change all mine out from the circles and bring in the floral elements because I went to the loom and saw the Van Gogh exhibition and I think the floral elements really work well with these photos and the colours that are in these photos as well. So I'm much happier with the end result of this. This paper which is from a retired mix-in with it and it just brings the yellows and the golds and the brightness out of these photos whereas the brown grey sort of just made everything look dull. These sort of disappeared a little bit even though they're bright and I know that it's bright with bright photos but for me I think this really pops. So I'm really loving that I did do a redo on this. It's not something that I do at all really very often. I have projects way back from when I first started scrapbooking that I would love to redo but I think I have to leave them as they are because it would be so much work. They are done, the memories are recorded, but for this one, when I looked at this, I really was feeling very blah about the whole thing. So I'm really glad that I put the time in and redid that and it really didn't take me too long. I was able to keep this piece here with the month and the camera already done and even though the camera is in grey, it still works quite well with these photos. So I hope you like what I've done with this and I'm wondering if you got it right as to which month. Alrighty, let's move on to August and some more flowers. There's inking on these as well. There's lots of journaling. So this was all done on my computer that I printed off. And the floral elements are here to bring out the colours in these photos as well. So just these little pops of colour, I think, make these photos stand out really nicely. You can tell I'm still in pretty much the New England Ivy and Avocado range, which I'll show you at the end what those colours are. There's a lot of New England Ivy and Avocado. I'll be happy if I don't see these two colours for quite some time. I did do in the design space file some word art pieces and some other pieces and they were designed by me. So if you're interested in those files, they come with the design space file and you will be able to cut these out. You don't need any collections for these. It's totally all done in design space file with a free font that's within Cricut. Okay, September, I didn't have as many photos and these photos were all taken on the same day. I didn't need to put anything else in here. I think September I was busy working on creative stuff and just got all involved in that sort of process and didn't take a lot of other photos but this was a very exciting day. So as you can see here this is my parents and my daughter and I went down, they live in the country and we went down and surprised them to watch this grand final with them and thankfully our team won. I'm sorry to all the Swan supporters but it really made my mum and dad so happy happy that it was a good match for them to watch. So it was an exciting day and I decided that I would spread this out across the whole two pages. So I quite like how that worked out. Then we're going into October and I've got a variety of photos back again. The lilacs were out, more flowers. I loved actually putting this together. I haven't used this image before in Cricut and it was perfect to go with the lilacs that bloom in my backyard. We're getting close to the end. I'm in November. Lots of New England ivy and avocado again, but a little promise of warmth with some shortbread and toffee. So that was a little bit exciting. These ones I've treated with some white daisy ink. 
I've got some leaf elements here. I was on a scrapbooking retreat and this is the last one that we were hosting at this venue. This is the big hall and the one that I was usually in was a smaller room and it was the reptile room. So we have a few little companions. You would have seen a turtle earlier in my pages. This time I was able to get some great photos of this snake. He usually, oh it's a she actually, she usually just stays curled up. She doesn't move around much but she was quite active this time. She is contained so she wasn't roaming out around us with all our scrapbooking supplies. And what I decided to do with this one, because there's a little bit of white space here, I have got the journaling for this all behind in this little piece here. And I think I'm going to redo this journaling. I need to write a little bit smaller so I can fit a little bit more in because I didn't quite get all the information on there, but I wanted to get this video out. Because I decided to trim the photo down, there was a lot of dead space and they were taken on a portrait orientation, so it didn't quite work. So I trimmed these down to a square and then I've done some stamping here with New England Ivy and I've used this background element stamp. And when you look at this image, you can see that this dot area here has a solid line on the edge. This one doesn't have the solid line and I thought that would be really good to go with the snake skin. So what I've done is first generation stamping and without inking up again I've done second and third generation straight over the top. So I've stamped once, twice, three times and that gives this gorgeous look with all the different shades of that one colour and I think that works really well with this little snake. So this was a part that I hadn't quite finished off when I did the November layout share. So I'm going to flip over here and then my daughter and I are off Christmas tree shopping because we needed a brand new one because our old one was basically leaning like this. So it was time to shop. And these photos are of that afternoon out. And when I put them here, because I've done the stamping for the snake skin here, I thought it would work really well to do the same treatment in shortbread ink. And then that would replicate the lights of the decorations that were out. So I think that worked quite well and it ties it in and everything is cohesive when you flip from this side to that side. So I'm really pleased with how that worked out. Don't underestimate this stamp set. It's so useful for so many things. And now we're getting to December. So this is when everything got a little bit bright and sparkly. Julie wasn't quite sure about how the circles would all work across the top of the layout, but I knew that I wanted to make them into Christmas baubles. And even though my colors, you can see December was a little bit chilly because I got avocado in there. And then we had one really hot day. We got to Paprika, which is a hot day here. But I'm really happy with how this looks, even though my baubles are not the traditional colors that I would normally use. Adding the sparkle, and I show how I did all of that in the video for my December layouts. I will put a link to the playlist below of all our layouts. So if you want to see how I did that shimmer and shine, I think it's picking up a little bit better if I move this memory protector around. It was a lot of fun to do. A little bit of mixed media made easy. So you'll be able to check that out if you haven't seen the video already. I had to print off some extra photos and I've put them into a six by six page protector. And this works really well in a 12 by 12 album. You would have seen I used one of these earlier. And what I've done for this one, I've printed out the photos in a smaller size. So they're a little bit under three by three inches and I've put them onto these tag-like elements with all the photos. I'm not pulling these ones out because they are of my family, but you can see that I've got quite a few in there. There's two photos on each of these. So this is like a little snippet into Christmas. I've still got to finish off my Days of December project. So that's on my radar to get done. But this will slide in here and the family will be able to pull all of these out and see the photos that represent the month of December that they're in. How cute is my new tree? I'm really, really happy with that. It's a little bit of a skinnier tree than what I had. I used to have a much wider, foofier one that was so much hard work to put up. This one is so much easier. It's still quite tall, but it's a bit of a skinny mini and we just love it. All right, so now I'm up to the last page. So if you caught the video that I did with this, you'll know that I made a little pocket that I can pull all of these things out 
and this is where I have kept my temperatures. Julie and I created a guide for each month and this has got the little temperature range here as well. The guide comes with the JPEGs with all the color chart for what we've used. So you can see paprika, I got two. I got to the light shade. I didn't get to the dark shade for 2022. If I had done this project this year, we got up over 40 degrees, so I would have got to the dark shade, but not quite into scarlet. So my color tone range is all in this section here. And then I have done a story about how the project came together when Julie reached out to me and asked if I'd like to collab with her on a pretty big project. It was a commitment to do, and I'm just so glad I said yes, because I can't remember the last time I actually have an album that is completed from the previous year at this time of year already. So it just makes me so happy that this is done. My memories are in here. I've got memories of how this project came about, my little story about the project, the chats that I've had with Julie throughout the year. We do Facebook chats and we can see each other and it's just so fun to chat with her about this. The time zone is a little bit of a challenge. So one of us usually ends up having a bit of a late night and we talk for ages. It's not just a, oh, have you got time for a quick call? And we say yes to each other and then we end up talking for quite some time because we get on to other subjects so we have become very good friends through our computers and hopefully one day we will get to meet up in real life. So thanks Julie for inviting me on this journey with you to put this album together. I have really enjoyed it. It was a challenge at some stage. I would message her and say winter Things just don't move between 10 degrees and 17 degrees. We are just stuck there and she would be in the warmer areas and I'd be a little bit jealous of that. Then it would come to my summer and her winter and I wasn't jealous at all really of the temperatures that she was getting to. I can't even imagine trying to live where it's minus 30 degrees sometimes. That would be such a challenge for me. So I hope you've enjoyed this little flip through of the album that I put together. As I said, I will have a link below to Julie's video and also at the end of this video. And hopefully this might inspire you to, you could do a catch up. If you haven't scrapbook 2022, you can go and you can do this project because the Weather Bureau keeps those records. So you're able to go back and see what the weather is for every day. I did introduce other colors, of course, because obviously with this one, the blues work. So my little pieces that went into the film strip, they represented the colors. If you wanted to complete this project this year, you could start that right now. It's just such a fun way to do it. Everything is laid out for you. We have sketches, we have design space files for it, and it made it quite quick to put the pages together once my photos were printed. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you watched last year, I just so appreciate all the comments that you left. It really does make me happy that people watch the videos, left comments, I got to know some of those people better from the comments and they got snippets into what I do and it really makes my heart happy that I know that people are watching the videos and taking the time to like, subscribe and leave a comment about what they thought about this project and also share their encouragement of both Julie and I along the way as the year progressed. Thank you again for watching. Happy crafting. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.